Okay. Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Rex, and uh, I want us to continue writing our little biblical, our large, epic biblical novel today. And we're on chapter three. And in chapter three, you know, we want to address the problems or the complications in the plot that we looked at yesterday. And if you're reading a novel, one of the things you look at, if, if there are complications in the plot, one of the things you're asking is, what is the main character going to do here? And that's really the question that we come to in the scriptures as well. What is God going to do? Well, immediately after the fall in the garden, God makes a promise and he promises uh, to Eve that he's going to send someone who will be the offspring of woman who will crush the serpent's head. And, and so there's this looking ahead to something in the future and God is promising that he's going to take action somehow in, in all of this. Now, as we look at those other events, we also see that Cain is punished for the murder of his brother. God acts in that situation. In the flood, God calls out Noah and his family uh, from the destruction on the earth. And so we see God acting in that situation. And when we come to the Tower of Babel, we again uh, see God acting as he confuses the languages of all the people, scattering them throughout the earth. Uh, now, that was a major part of the rebellion that had developed because of the sin of Adam and Eve. But we are still faced with the question, what is God going to do? Well, in chapter 12, we see that God expands upon that promise that he gave to Eve in Genesis 3, and he finds a man by the name of Abraham. And he tells Abraham, Abraham, I am promising you that that I'm going to use you, I'm going to bless your family, you're going to have a great offspring that will spread throughout the earth, I'm going to give you a land, and he makes all these promises to Abraham. So the main character, God, comes into the plot at this point, and in the midst of a, of a world that's in total rebellion, he calls Abraham and his family out of that situation, and he says, I'm going to use you to restore order and beauty to this earth. Order and beauty that was lost way back in the garden. But he says, Abraham, you're a part of this story. And uh, so at this point then, we have a sense of hope that God is acting in the midst of this story, just as we would expect a main character to do, but the story is not yet complete, so it's developing. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed chapter three of our story, and I'll see you tomorrow for chapter four. Bye for now. God bless.